MSR's Elixir 2 backpacking tent. As much or little as you want, and then you can roll it up and neatly stash it away. So now we're going to talk about closed cell phone mattresses. Hey YouTube, Scotech here with another video. And uh, today we're going to help you guys uh, find the perfect boot for you in the large sea of different uh, selections. So the first off, waterproof or not? If you're going to be using your boot uh, in a lot of uh, ankle deep water, a bit higher than that, you're probably not going to want a waterproof boot. You're going to want to go for something a bit more vented as it drains a lot easier. Any waterproof boot is still going to be fully waterproof, but if water gets in through the top, it doesn't really come out at all. So having that option of vent is a lot easier if you're going to have uh, water inside your boot at all times. So let's say you decided that waterproof is the way to go. Now what? You have Salmons that have a Gore-Tex waterproofing, you have Keens that have Keen Dry, Oboes with their own Be Dry. Which one's best? For starters, a lot of people think Gore-Tex when they think of breathable waterproofing. And this is mainly for one reason, because they've been around the longest. Whereas many of these other uh, new technologies have only been around for around 10 years, maybe slightly longer, Gore-Tex has been around for around 50 years, even longer. So this is what people think of, and they generally think it's best. This is kind of like how everyone calls bandages band-aids. Band-aids aren't better than any other bandage, but that's just what people call them. Many of these technologies all use the similar materials and different methods, but they're all very similar, and they all have their own pros and cons, and they all generally are very similar. For example, there's Keen Dry and Gore-Tex. They both use very similar materials and a very similar method to, of waterproofing. However, some users find, uh, a lot of users find the Keen Dry to be more breathable. However, some say the Gore-Tex is a bit more durable. They both have their ups and downs, and it's more about deciding what's best for you. If you want something with more breathability, look to Keen Dry or uh, another option that's a bit more breathable. If it's durability, they're all very similar, but generally Gore-Tex takes the lead there. So now you've found what waterproofing you generally want. Now you have to look at the grip. There are many different types of grip. There's the uh, same thing kind of applies to the wa as waterproofing, where you have different companies that sell and license out their technologies to companies. For example, Sullivan uses a technology called ContraGrip. However, this is also used in a bunch of other shoes, such as uh, some Keens shoes, and, uh, but for the most part, a lot of most Sullivan shoes have the contra grip. Whereas a uh, grip like on the Merrells use another company called Vibram. Then there's the third party. For example, we have Obos. This is not a company grip that they uh, are got licensed out to them. This is their own grip. Having this gives them more freedom to make their own uh, choices. As you can see on these grips here, they're a bit more standard and manufacturers don't have as much of their own freedom. They basically pick from a catalog of which grip they want. They don't have the same choice as if you were to look at the Obos, they have their own freedom, they have more lugs on the side, it's a bit more rugged and different. This is uh, because they have more freedom. There's not one that's better, but the companies that do have a focus on the grip, they are focusing on this and this only and they do have various uh, types of good technologies, but there isn't one that's necessarily better than the other. So now it's time to decide whether you want a leather boot, a synthetic boot, or something right in the middle. So if you're looking uh, for a shoe that's going to have a lot of tough use and you want it to last a long time, then leather generally wins in terms of dur durability. It is also uh, naturally breathable and uh, slightly water resistant. So if you're looking for something with some natural water resistance, but you don't want to spend the extra buck for a full waterproof boot, then leather is generally the way to go. So there's two types of leather that's commonly used, full grain and nut buck leather. They're both naturally water resistant and naturally breathable. However, nut buck leather is more flexible and um, is slightly less durable due to its refined process. Synthetic is uh, more breathable, especially before adding the waterproof uh, uh, liner. And uh, it's also a lot lighter. So if you're looking for a boot for long treks, and uh, it doesn't have to be, not gonna be 
the hardest um, use on it. Having that lighter boot is something you will probably want, and synthetic is definitely much, much lighter. Leather generally offers a bit more stability as it is uh, more uh, durable, so over the long term, your uh, leather boot is going to hold that form a bit better and keep your foot stable for longer. There's always hybrid options as well that have a bit of both and are uh, generally uh, companies try to go for the best of each. Uh, there's also uh, the styling. This isn't necessarily the most practical um, thing to consider, but it is something that most people do consider and find pretty important. Leather boots have their own uh, styling to them. Uh, generally people think of them as like more of a classic boot, whereas now there's some newer models that um, are all synthetic and uh, are tend to try to be aimed at like an everyday shoe as well if needed. The styling is all personal preference. Leather is also generally more expensive. So if you're looking for a high-end boot that's going to last you a long time and be very durable, leather is the way to go. If you're looking for something that isn't too expensive, then synthetic is the way to go. Or if you have kids and you know their foot's going to be grown in like a few months, then synthetic is definitely uh, the better option for that as well. The one last difference is the break-in time. Leather is a much tougher material, due and which also makes it more durable. However, it is much harder to break in. Synthetic uh, has been praised for uh, its quick break-ins and its uh, incredible comfort right out of the box. So if you're looking for a boot to take on a trip very soon, or just hate having sore feet for a day or two getting used to the boot, then synthetic is definitely the way to go. However, long-term comfort is generally tied between the two, as once you break in a leather boot, it is just as comfortable as a synthetic boot. Many different hiking boots come in a few different uh, varieties. There is generally a wide option, and a, normally there's a low option and a mid option. So now you've decided to boot. But, for example, take the Xultras. There's a mid option and a low option. Which one's better? Well, generally the mid and high options offer uh, much greater support around your ankle, and it's also a bit better for uh, protection from branches, or if you're going off trail, having that extra protection around your ankles is nice to avoid scratches, cuts, bug bites. Um, so this also, uh, the higher support is generally better for weaker ankles. So if you're someone who's had an ankle injury or two and your ankle just hasn't recovered quite properly, having that extra support is much safer and um, will allow for greater support if needed. As you can see, many of the low options have a quick lace option where there isn't really a quick lace option for the highs. Quick lace is only um, is really good for uh, having an even fit around the whole foot and it's much quicker. Some users um, say they have to readjust throughout the day, but generally it's the same as having to retie your shoe, just quicker. There's not that much difference really. Um, maybe some shoes have them with a pouch to put the extra lace in after you have tightened them, while well, some don't. If you're looking for a shoe that, if you're looking at a shoe that doesn't have this pouch, it is important to note that some users, if you have a smaller foot and have to tighten it a lot, uh, some users get annoyed by the rest of the string and uh, it can be a tripping hazard. However, many newer shoes now have a pouch or somewhere you can uh, put this extra string. So. The one uh, benefit of having a low boot is um, you have much more flexibility in your ankle, which is good for um, having uh, for hills, steep slopes, needing that extra mobility. Many experienced hikers who, are, uh, who have learned where to place their feet properly on uh, uneven terrain, um, so they uh, don't need the extra support, like the mobility and the freedom of a low. However, if you're uh, still getting into it and uh, want to play it safe, having the extra support can't really hurt. And um, it is also much easier for water to enter through a low boot than a high boot, uh, which as uh, we mentioned earlier, if you have a waterproof boot, this does make a big difference as once water is in, it's much harder to get out if it's waterproof. Let's talk about the fit of the shoe. Each brand generally fits very differently. Oboes are known to be a bit of a wider fit, whereas Solomons are known to be a bit more of a narrow fit. But even then, each model between the brands are slightly different. They are going to be similar if they are the same brand, but they will be slightly different. This can also be the same for the newer updated version of a shoe. For example, the Speedcross, Solomon Speedcross 4s 
fit a lot narrower than their Speedcross 3s. So if you are just getting the newer version of a shoe, be sure to go try it out too, just in case. We do recommend this when you're trying out any shoe. Be sure to go try it on. We know uh, it can be uh, very intimidating when you walk into your local outdoor store and see the wall full of shoes and not really sure what, how they're different, which one to get. So we hope this video has helped. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please click the link right here to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time.